Oh, Kotaku is derping around Getting black Lucifer, acting like clowns And pretending that the petty Nintendo feud Is comparable to fighting in World War II When Nintendo sketchy patents and above the wife saves And turn shut down And DMCA's and forever gone A shake of hard salary And they hired an expert in NFTs But Brian Wolf tends to gain more clout Yet there's more fun stuff to generalize about Like all the life services that didn't make returns And NFT investments that crashed and burned Also take to interact against Drunk on power and claims that the game should be priced by the hour and Unity reneged on the latest call where developers paid for every install. These are the worst gaming failures. 2023. Bad games, bad press, and bad choices. The products of corporate greed. And all of it is so trite, it's just so hard to believe. These are the worst gaming failures. 2023. The escape is cans, a great editor and chief Yahtzee was his friend, so he also leaves American McGee tried to clean the Dallas tree and like the third time, father was a baby and Jedi survivor released pretty buggy, but if that's EA's worse than I guess we got lucky shadow drop die for rushes, still out shiny big bunch of folks, but it's millennial riding Ubisoft comes back with several backtracks of deleting all the counts and pop up ads, all the clouds are getting twisted and it makes you want to cry when they hide the games folks would actually buy, are they selling cosmetics that are only one use and blame creators they're just out of twos, use a zoo be back with more NFTs and in the chat for the death of E3. These are the worst gaming failures. 2023. Bad games, bad press, and bad choices. The products of corporate greed. And all of it is so trite, it's just so hard to believe. These are the worst gaming failures. Customers recoiled with a trembling cry. Rising from the depths had ascended. Corporations beheld a new way to discover by laying off workers and still getting money. Square and Ubisoft cutting corners with Lee and public apologies made with ChatGPT. This caused a strike but did little in the end with a tiny loophole called exceptions to consent. And Activision players being just the worst Their PvE promises get hard reverse With paid wall story and devious promise And conditioning kids using predatory FOMO Maui Maka Dev Crunch Game Battles More the Punch Surveys Essays Double Worker Down with Punch The Ridiculous Requirements For a called Launcher Diablo 4 is a chore And Horse Armor This company's years was such a sh** show That even China told them GTFO is the cringiest fails anyone ever seen Y'all kept saying this should be a top 15 Raged on for 12 more months, a lot of waste of money, a lot of jobs were lost, but the start of next year, we have a solid winning. Bobby Kotick is finally quitting. These are the worst gaming failures. 2023. Bad games, bad press, and bad choices. The products of corporate greed. And all of it is so trite, it's just so hard to believe. These are the worst gaming failures. Worst gaming failures. These are the worst gaming failures. Worst gaming failures. It was genuinely hard coming up with the list this year. Not because of a lack of failures. No, no, no. This year was filled with so, so many fails that sticking to my guns and keeping it to just 10 was an endeavor. In some ways, choosing what number 10 was was going to be harder than choosing number 1. Ultimately, Sony managed to edge out the competition. What did they do that managed to secure the, the number 10 spot? Oh, just that little thing. No biggie. They just told the IP factory to destroy merchandise that customers had already paid for. They've also been deleting shows that people have paid for too. Taking people's money and giving them the middle finger is a big no-no in my book. Especially in this economy. Thanks for making a very strong case of why physical is better than digital, you pricks. But alas, Sony's done more than just that. They've also hiked the price of PlayStation Plus by a whopping 35%. Now, if they actually had new games on it, maybe you could justify it. But for some reason, they keep remastering Last of Us and Last of Us 2. Naughty Dog, we used to love you, but please remember you have more than one freaking IP. Yes, this is going under Sony's fails because Sony seems to be half the reason they insist on milking this cow so dry that the milk comes out powdered. Now, I know this is kind of a boring and pretty straightforward number 10, but taking people's money and giving them jack in return is still scummy, even though it may not be spicy. Let's fix that, shall we?
These are the worst gaming failures. 2023. Oh, look. Kotaku made the fails list. Again. I want to show you something. It's my shocked face. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many familiar faces we see on these lists, and shock, shock, Kotaku's back at it. It feels like nothing can stop them from their clickbaity inflammatory articles. I'll give them credit for this at least. They rightfully called out XQC for his scummy reaction video. Do I even need to spell out why that one was bad? But enough of their goods, this is about their bads. What'd they do this year? Well, for starters, they wrote an article basically defending bad PC ports. According to them, it's not a new thing, so people shouldn't be getting this upset over them. Yeah, I know I've come into your house and punched you in the face every day for 10 years straight, but come on, you should expect this by now. Why are you so mad? Kotaku, this is kind of a new era. Progress, forward direction. We're kind of hoping to see less of these same problems. And PC games are more expensive than they used to be. So if I paid $60 for Arkham Knight and it still looked like this, I'd be pretty mad. Also, I find it pretty hypocritical that Kotaku would call out people for being bitter Bettys, considering all the sour grapes they've shown over Nintendo. Apparently they were completely floored that Nintendo blacklisted them. Well, gee, why ever would mean old Mr. Nintendo do that to Poor, innocent Kotaku. Surely it's not because they endorsed piracy over their own skill issues, claimed Persona 5 used a slur via misheard lyrics, made false allegations of sexual misconduct, tried to compare themselves to World War II pilots, inadvertently comparing Nintendo to a psychopathic dictatorship that Japan has repeatedly expressed shame over, all the freaking leaks they pull. Wow, it sure is a mystery. It was just a simple misunderstanding. Of course, that never stops Kotaku from taking the low road whenever they can. Despite being blacklisted, they went ahead and posted leaks about Tears of the Kingdom, and then later wrote an article about how they're glad that one site gave it a 6 out of 10. The ceiling's soft, the floor's soft, the walls are soft, and to an extent, the air is soft. Look, I'll never say that Nintendo is flawless or free from legitimate criticism some of which may pop up later on this list, but this lack of self-awareness and professionalism on Kotaku's part is just embarrassing. Is it any wonder why Jason Schreier left them? Now, it would be disingenuous to say that every person working at Kotaku is automatically an idiot. They publish a lot of articles each day, some of them informative or even helpful, and our rage farming internet landscape does tend to hyper-focus on the crappy ones. Oh, with that said, higher-ups really should have the common sense not to publish blatantly dumb and or inflammatory articles. Just remember, kids, it's important to learn from your mistakes so you can make them twice as hard. Side note, Kotaku, Voss would like a talk with you after class. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? These are the worst gaming failures. 2023. Well, one of our subsidiaries has finished their latest AAA title, so now we can release it. Well, under the circumstances, I'd rather not. Why not? Microsoft, I'm afraid this is your worst AAA release of 2023. It has all the AAA smells. So you're saying it's blatantly unfinished? Yes. The story is non-existent? Yes. With poorly implemented live service elements? Uh, a little bit, yes. In addition, we found several completely new fails in it. I see, but higher up said everything was fine. Uh, no, that's because they relied on mock reviews. If you have a minute, I can explain. Well... Okay, so this Doray represents the game, and these are development issues. This is Crunch, this is poor management, and this cute little cuddlebug is all the devs that left. Now, here's what happens when they all try to make a game. Move it, shout ahead! We call it the Arcane Magic. So what you're saying is, it can be released. Oh, no, no, no. In fact, even a slight change or delay could- It can be released. These are the worst gaming failures. 2023. For the latest live services to die a completely expected death. Lord, hear our F-Press. 
Live Services, gaming's latest gold rush. For everyone that becomes a billion dollar franchise, there are dozens more that are remembered only for the trends they chased. 2023 was especially brutal in terms of just how many came to an end. So, why not rank them? Here's every dead live service game mocked in 10 words or less. Did you keep the working title or now I just want to watch a little commercial again? Probably would have fit in during the 90s. Gloria Victis Donne. This verse will never rumble again. Remember when auto battlers were a thing? Me neither. Wait, did these same devs make another failed live service? Oh, hey, Konami was wondering when you'd show up. Platinum just can't catch a break, can they? Little late for Battle Royale, Square. A little late. Looks like they fell on deaf ears. Just give us Bravely third already. <laughs> way to live up to your name. <laughs> oh, then that's just funny. Yeah, same devs, by the way. Burn away to nothing. Aw, that one was actually good. Almost as good as the MCU is right now. Thanks for aging one of my best videos. You pricks. These are the worst gaming failures. 2023. Square, what am I gonna do with you? I know you're a good developer, but you really need to rein in some of your business practices. Your old CEO leaves and you replace it with one who's trying to make the metaverse a thing. Has freed us. Oh, I wouldn't say free. More like under new management. Then you decide to double down on NFTs as well. Too bad for you, this was the year the crypto market and metaverse went crashing harder than the Stadia. Didn't stop people from showing interest in their crypto game and they have an auction going on right now for it. Oh, but when you do make games, you decide not to market them or put money into games that people won't like. Remember Forspoken? Spoken. A luminous game that came out at the beginning of the year that got mocked to hell and backed by many gamers? To sum up the opinions, a derivative and amateurish story constantly broken by stilted and janky animations and cheesy millennial dialogue littered with so much awkward cursing that vivzy pop would call it gratuitous. Not surprisingly, it didn't sell well. And actually, surprisingly, it took Luminous down with it as a dev team. So let me get this straight. We stopped working on 15's DLC so we can make a new game. It gets met reviews, meme to hell and back, and oh yeah, it gets outperformed by a freaking shadow dropped indie game. Yeah, okay, that is something we do now. Spend five years to release a game that kills the studio. We'll probably get laid off next. Speaking of bad technology practices and bad games, Square released an AI tech demo back in the spring called The Portopia Serial Murder Case, which was supposed to be a remake of a 1983 adventure game of the same name, but with an internal AI that can derive actions from text. Cool idea in theory, but in practice, the AI barely registered prompts and couldn't even distinguish between different wordings of the same phrase. It became one of the worst reviewed games on Steam after a week. Also, remember that whole list of live services that we awarded for shutting down? Yeah, you may have noticed a little bit of a trend for that as Square has won the award for most live services shut down in a year. I won! I won! Despite all of this, Square still had good games this year. This includes Octopath Traveler 2, the Star Ocean 2 remake, and of course, Final Fantasy 16. Despite these great releases, Square wants to double down on crypto and pour money into AAA games. If they actually focused more on making good games and less on all these gimmicks, then they'd probably do well. But now, they want to go down the stupid NFT rabbit sinkhole. Hey, Square, look at me. Make an HD 2D remake of Chrono Trigger? You will make more money than a year of Final Fantasy XIV revenue. These are the worst gaming failures, 2023. Okay, something feels weird. I think we're forgetting a company that's been here pretty consistently, but never really got this high. It's a me. Oh man, Nintendo, what did you do? Yeah, Nintendo made the top five this year. You think they're weirdo fans that pulled a fire alarm to watch a direct or the a-holes that tried to scalp a Van Gogh promotion would get in here before them, but here we are. They even beat out Ubisoft. Yeah, I can't believe I said it, but Nintendo did shadier stuff than Ubisoft this year. Don't worry, my stomach hurts too. What the heck did they do to make them top five fails material? Well, let me grossly oversimplify it down to one word. Preservation. 
Oh, I'm not talking about preserving their games for people to play. They want to preserve their IPs internally so that no one can alter them. Yeah, the company who named their characters after a landlord and a litigator who defended them for copyright issues keeps sending copyright strikes against YouTubers, either modding their games or talking about canceled ones. It's like a bad joke. Come on, guys, this won't help. You guys are already closing down the eShop on 3DS and Wii U without preserving the massive libraries on both. I uh, without preserving the massive library on 3DS, yeah. And you even announced this year that you're getting rid of online services for those systems next year. Say what you will about Sega, but they at least know how to do that. You can find tons of old Genesis games for dirt cheap on Steam. And they're rebooting a lot of their old franchises. All you're doing is pushing people to piracy by not preserving your games. Instead, you decide to combat piracy by suing the heck out of websites and hackers. For example, the hacker Gary Bowser, yes, it is funny, shut up, was sentenced to 40 months in prison and will have his wages garnished for pretty much the rest of his life until he can pay the 4.5 million he owes Nintendo in penalty fees. This is the kind of punishment that corporations should be getting. Look, I'm no piracy advocate, but holy crap, it seems like they're trying to make me one. Don't worry, since Nintendo's being so extreme in its fight against piracy, it must be doing well with its storied IPs, right? <laughs> hey, how are those glitches in Scarlet and Violet doing? You know, the memory leak issue that caused people to lose their saves? What? It's still not completely fixed? Oh! I think I'm gonna have a heart attack and die from that surprise! Yep, as of writing, the game is still plagued by performance issues and some memory leak issues. And this is after Indigo Disc. You guys were able to do it in Zelda. Why the heck is Pokemon, your most profitable franchise, getting the shaft? Oh, and uh, speaking of Zelda, why'd you guys file 32 patents for mechanics related to Tears of the Kingdom? Like, I get doing it for Ultra Hand and Fusey, but why are you also doing it for loading screens from fast travel? All patents do is prevent other companies from doing similar things or allow Nintendo to sue them for patent infringement. It hinders the industry for no gosh dang reason. Luckily, none of the patents went through, but think about what would happen if they did with how lawsuit happy Nintendo has been recently. Yeah, I don't want to either. Lastly, tournaments. Yep, Nintendo is still being a pain to its competitive scene by giving really strict guidelines to smaller tournaments without a license. They're limiting the number of participants, limiting the prize pools and admissions fees, and are requiring a YouTube or X, <coughs> I mean Twitter, subscription to watch. While some of these aren't as bad with context, what's even worse is that they're stopping people from selling food and drink and banning accessories that aren't licensed by Nintendo. So for people who need third-party accessories to play the game, such as the disabled, Tough Beans, jeez la freaking wheeze, Nintendo, you really went off the deep end this time. And yet, despite all this, it's still hard to hate you. This is still the year we got games like Tears of the Kingdom and Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Heck, you even went out of your way to increase your employees' wages despite lower sales at the beginning of the year. It's hard to say that Nintendo is more good than bad since this year was the worst they've been in a while, but it goes to show how gray our world is. No one's fully good or evil, just a bunch of people driven by their own impulses and whims. Oh, but don't worry. If you want real failure, the best is still to come. These are the worst gaming failures, 2023. A little transparency about how we rank these fails countdowns. Simply making a bad or even an offensive product isn't enough to guarantee a spot on the list. It doesn't help for sure, but how we go about this usually comes about two sliding scales, how many people are hurt and how severely people are hurt. If a game bombs, but the studio didn't crunch their employees, then I say we have bigger fish to fry. Or say overpricing a bad game or trying to nickel and dime consumers, while infuriatingly awful in most contexts, is usually less egregious than not paying your employees. To wit, we tend to rank greed and incompetence lower than abuse. So with that context, let's talk about this year's biggest double whammy of greed and incompetence. Well, <laughs> in the gaming industry at least. If you're an indie game designer hoping to get your foot in the door of the industry, the Unity game engine was probably your best friend. I say was, 
past tense, because in September 2023, Unity announced a big change to it that, well, they're shooting yourself in the foot and then they're blowing your fucking legs off. This announcement said that starting in January 2024, Unity would be issuing a runtime fee in which developers using the engine would have to pay monthly royalties for every time their game was installed. Just picture this, Unity is a service, and if you wanna get the full experience of said service, it's gonna cost a pretty penny per month. Now you gotta pile on more debt for every time someone installs your passion project and Ouch, I think my bank account just got an aneurysm. But wait, how can this possibly be legal? Because apparently they secretly changed their terms of service and removed a repository that allowed developers to track when sneaky old Mr. Unity changed their terms of service. Basically saying they could catch you with your pants down and charge you extra all they want. What greedy smooth brain tried to green like the- Here's Johnny. <laughs> For the uninitiated, that is Unity's CEO at the time, John Ricciatello, who's a former EA CEO. The picture becomes a lot clearer, doesn't it? I should consider this ironic given how he tried to sell the whole no royalties thing back in 2015, but I'm pretty sure I'm becoming jaded when it comes to EA alumni monkeying around. Oh, fun fact, did you know that in No More Heroes 3, Suda51 based the final boss off Richitello? And it was gloriously therapeutic being the snot out of him Smash Bros style. I'll give Unity this, however. They definitely lived up to their name. They united developers and the community against them for all of their buffoonery. Indie developers, including the guys behind Among Us, threatened to switch over to a new gaming engine, and gamers were especially upset with having to deal with the guilt of screwing over indie workers with demos, freemium games, and freaking charity bundles. The backlash was so bad, Unity backed off a week later. Uh, kinda. They're still going forward with the fees, but made them more avoidable by using an older version of the software. Wow. I'm actually impressed they're that stubborn. It'd be funny if it weren't so pathetic. But if any actual good came out of this, it's that Richitello was booted from the company. And nothing of value was lost. Time will only tell where Unity will go from here, but yeesh! When gamers and studios can unanimously agree on something and are collectively against something, you done messed up! These are the worst gaming failures. 2023. I am gonna save a ton when I replace all those workers with robots. All right, here's my yearly poor attempt at a nuanced hot take. Look, I'm not an AI tech bro. I think a lot of the ways that AI has been used has been cringy at best and bad faith at worst. However, there are a lot of ways it's been unfairly maligned. I've seen programmers use AI to get their code started while they polish off the bits that don't work, drastically reducing the amount of time spent on it. And yeah, it's very easy to tell nowadays when people use AI art, but give that generation to an actual artist and say, draw it similar to this, that's basically handing them a reference pick. I think AI really does have potential as a way to lighten the workload, as long as we don't get lazy with it. Voice actress Kira Buckland has a wonderful thread about how people who may be light of cash and may be tempted to use AI as a quick fix can still secure decent VAs for their projects. AI, to me, is a tool, neither inherently good nor bad, and can be used ethically and should be used ethically. Where I think the actual problem lies is when people try to use AI to replace people instead of help them. And if there's any entity that loves to abuse any new tool they have to try and make more money at the expense of people, it's freaking corporations. You give them an inch, they take a mile, and boy was the games industry not immune. Obviously we can't talk about AI misuse in entertainment without talking about the Writers Guild and SAG after strikes. Part of the reason these unions went on strike was because corporations like the AMPTP wanted to use artificial intelligence to do things like write scripts and copy certain actors' likenesses. These strikes would eventually end, but the employees ended up not getting protection. Great work, higher-ups. While these strikes were more for film and TV, some voice actors for video games are a part of SAG-AFTRA as well. And yeah, 
they got screwed over this year with the rise of AI generated voice performances in games. Embark Studios did it when they released their FPS, The Finals. This was confirmed by the audio designers themselves when asked, who did the voiceovers? They sound really authentic. They responded by saying that all the voice clips were made by using an AI text-to-speech program. So yeah, they're about as authentic as Dick Van Dyke's British accent. The constable is responsible. But oh, I forgot. These are indie developers. They can't afford real voice actors now, can they? Wait, you hear that? I think FNAF developer Scott Cawthon's entered the chat, and all he has to say is... What you said is factually wrong. Those statements are even less factual when you consider the fact that high res tried to replace dead actors with AI, which they later backpedaled on. Then there was this patent by EA that allows players of their games to voice the characters through a voice replication tool. And okay, I'm torn. Yes, this debacle certainly got traction this year, but the patent was technically filed back in 2020 and nothing's come of it yet. But yeah, it's EA. They'll probably abuse it. And I know voice actors are rightfully raw and wary after the stunts people tried to pull in regards to the strikes. But let's all take a deep breath and have the punishment come after the crime, like here. When Bamco released their latest Naruto fighting game, people quickly figured out that several of the game's voice lines were made using AI. Several of the game's actual voice actors confirmed these suspicions, and Bamco later admitted that the issue came down to inconsistencies during the editing slash mastering process. You know you can avoid inconsistencies by having the actual voice actors do a retake, right? Most of these guys live in LA, it's just an Uber drive down, not a big deal. And then there's the AI generated art. No, I'm not talking about the memeable nightmare fuel or those disturbing Pixar movie posters that admittedly tickle my dark funny bone. I'm talking about things like Riot Games using AI art for a video celebrating 10 years of League of Legends in Latin America. People would rightfully call them out for their blatant disrespect and all they did in response was delete the video from their YouTube channel. Then there was Niantic, who very clearly used AI to generate a cityscape for Pokemon Go promotional material. When fans speculated this, Niantic's response was a very clear and very honest... Maybe, maybe not. Both are very suspicious cases, but if you want something truly malicious, look no further than Rayark, who literally fired their artists and used AI to replace their hard work. Oh, and Rayark would deny these claims in a written statement because... I guess they're actable as now. Heck, Jago Games even fed an indie developer's artwork into an AI program without their permission. You know something's amiss when artificial intelligence is literally being used to steal from people. Of all the cautionary tales made about AI, haven't seen a movie about this one yet. Worse still, AI hasn't just been used to replace voice actors and artists, but even programmers, resulting in an Angry Birds clone coded entirely by artificial intelligence. The developer of the game even tweeted out that AI has endless possibilities and that any resemblance to Angry Birds is purely coincidental. <laughs> He's riddled with lies. We can't talk about AI misuse without talking about Microsoft partnering with AI game company InWorld to try and make game development easier for devs to realize their creative vision. But then several developers would debunk this, saying that the only people interested in making bigger games on shorter timelines are in leadership. You know, the guys that don't actually make the games. As I said, AI isn't inherently good or evil, but when it costs people their careers, we need to say that enough is enough. One silver lining, gamers across the board have been against it. Even NetEase got hit with backlash in China after implementing it in their games. But until corporations understand the damage they're causing by favoring the convenience of technology over the talent of hardworking employees, we could be looking at a dark future where people will be left without jobs. Oh, about that. These are the worst gaming failures, 2023. 2023 was a great year for games, but a terrible one for those that made them. On one hand, we had great installments in old franchises, solid remakes, refreshingly high quality B games, fantastic indie games, and this is just showcasing a few. On the other hand, we had some really, 
really crap AAA games, and we've heard some really concerning reports about workers. Hollywood saw the SAG after strikes, and the video game industry was plagued by a lot of mass layoffs. Like, an obscene amount of mass layoffs. So many, like, almost every month, you'd have to do this. <coughs> to try and understand, there were so many mass layoffs this year, we could have easily turned this list into top 10 biggest layoffs of 2023. In fact, Lightning Round! Lightning Round! Lightning Round! Three, three, three. Epic! The Epic Games Store still isn't profitable. How is this supposed to help? Bungie, they deliberately saved the mass layoff for the end of the month to skip the severance pay. Wow. Microsoft took a step forward by removing Bobby Kotick. Took a step back with this. Niantic, funny how they keep pushing for community gameplay for their apps, but can't be kind to their own community. Telltale, oh come on guys, you've just rebound from bankruptcy and you're already blowing it? Bioware, gee, that definitely gives me more confidence for the next Dragon Age. Unity. So, screwing over indie game developers wasn't enough. You had to try and pull one over your own team? EA. Dang it, EA, you were actually on a roll this year. Debatably. Amazon. They still do games? Sega of America. Over 40% of its staff gone. It too, Sonic. And to really show how bad it's gotten, League of Geeks, an indie studio, canned half of its staff. In fact, I guarantee by the time this video comes out, there will be more layoffs that we didn't mention. The worst part is that pretty much half of these layoffs are due to greed rather than bad business. Because, you know, heaven forbid that Mr. Boss Man settles for a million dollars instead of a billion. Oh, and when it is due to bad business, the people who were actually responsible never get the boot. Look, if an employee is genuinely bad or does some nasty business, then they definitely deserve to be let go. Heck, in a just world, I can name plenty of executives who deserve a pink slip. However, I cannot and will not advocate for poorly conceived mass layoffs of any kind, especially for greed. What kind of image do you think that makes for the industry? Use your mind. Think about people, how they perceive you. Anything you're about to do, you should think about the method first before you do it. And I think a good rule of thumb is, if Hitler tried it, <laughs> maybe go another direction. This is just mind boggling. I thought the freaking pandemic was over. Why is business so crappy? Oh yeah, turns out, it seems that people actually lost their jobs because people started going back to work and didn't need to stay inside with entertainment anymore. We just can't win. These are the worst gaming failures, 2023. Yu Suzuki returns with Virtua Fighter NFTs. Who let you back in? Bad PC ports. If CompileHeart can consistently pump out good PC ports, you officially have no excuse. CDPR pays jack in lawsuit. It's nice to see that the legal system is equally as broken in other countries. Gollum. While deserving of ire, the reports of abuse, crunch, and unpaid overtime are merely allegations. King Kong. Gotta love meme culture. The Invincible Game Trailer. I see publishers didn't learn from Artifact or Diablo Immortal. Scalpers. Selling PS5s at a loss. I'm good with this. E3 is dead for good. Look, it may have been a cringe fest half the time, but it was our cringe fest. Starfield leaker sells stolen copies. Natural selection is still at work, I see. Capcom's anti-modding. <sighs> they were doing so well. The escape is imploding. Dictionary definition of cutting off your nose to spite your face. Andy and Laylee's creator doxed. Can people stop being awful to each other for five minutes? Bethesda's response to Starfield reviews. Maybe instead of telling people they should enjoy your game, you could make it better. Starfield pronouns rage. I think Starfield being painfully mid is more deserving of ire than an option that doesn't even impact gameplay. Completionist charity scandal. Okay, so the money wasn't pocketed, but dang, would some transparency have avoided you looking sketchy as hell. Ubisoft accidentally releases Beyond Good and Evil remaster. I get it, you wanted to save it for the 20th anniversary, but how do you accidentally this? The day before, oh, we have a new MMO in the ring, and it's gone. The Game Awards, snubbing Octopath Traveler 2, giving celebrities more time to talk than actual devs, you know, the guys who make the games. To me, that's kind of worse than Spider-Man 2 losing seven nominations. Hogwarts Legacy. I'm not smart enough to talk about this, nor do I even want to talk about this. 
Please stop DMing me to talk about this. These are the worst gaming failures. 2023. As my friend Luna Corva has told me, while subverting expectations can be fun, sometimes the choice is obvious because the choice is right. And as much as I would love to go against the grain, he's right. I know this is obvious, but if they didn't want to be number one again, they should have behaved themselves. EA was able to behave. You have no excuse. Yes, I'm talking about our dear friends at Actabliz. Woo, I love thirds. Three is the magic number. Congratulations on getting the hat trick three years in a row as the number one worst gaming company. You certainly worked hard to get this far. This will also be Actablizz's last year on the list because starting next year, there'll be Microsoft Blizzard or Microblizz, if you will. I look forward to absolutely nothing changing. If you think I'm stalling, you're kinda right. It's hard to decide what to talk about here. They've just been so awful this year, it's hard to know where to start. I don't know what deserves more detail, but I have to skim over for the sake of not making this video an extra hour long. I, I, I think I'll start with the ones that I can do in a bullet point style, and then with those left over, go into a mini countdown like last year. Sound good? Sound good. Here we go. Actabliz killing off one of their tournament hosting websites. This isn't the only competitive scene Actabliz acts this year. Overwatch League shut down, trying to force a professional competitive scene on your game instead of letting it grow naturally almost always fails. Hearthstone team layoff, Actablaze is following gaming company trends with big layoffs this year. Firing a lead dev for not betraying their staff, probably the only time someone's been fired at Actablaze for not being the a-hole. What are we live in? Actablaze union busting, I'm not anti-union, I just don't like people that don't play by the rules. Oh, I see the problem. He said the instead of my. Overwatch 2's MAGA. Are we sure this isn't a lawsuit in the making? Cause this looks like a lawsuit in the making. Look at him, he's Maui with extra steps. Speaking of, gutting Overwatch 2's single player despite promising actual PVE, then charging for limited time access. Why won't you let me die? Actabliz and Google's dirty dealings. Google paid Actabliz much more than 360 million to not develop their own app store. Actably is named as defendant in child brainwashing lawsuit. Or the parents could raise their kids instead of letting a screen do it. Return to office mandate. But of course, it's easier to sexually harass someone in the office rather than over a Zoom call. Activision Blizzard has to pay 54 million to settle a discrimination lawsuit. Oh, but Bobby Kotick totally fixed the culture, guys. And now we get to the heavy hitters. As if what came before wasn't bad enough. Diablo 4. Just when we thought Diablo Immortal was the most bastardized the franchise could get, along comes this. What was supposed to be the golden savior of the IP ended up in some ways being even worse than Immortal. There's the battle pass, there's the deleting of online characters in hardcore mode, and there's how painfully unfun Diablo 4 is. Seriously, just go play Diablo 3 or PoE or something. Diablo 4 also repeated the same trick as Overwatch 2, making the cash shop stupidly easy to misclick on, not asking for confirmation, and then refusing refunds. Speaking of unreasonable monetary practices, Actabliz put out a survey recently asking how much you'd pay for a Diablo 4 expansion, with prices ranging from $60 to $100, on top of what is already a full price game. Compare that to God of War Ragnarok or Sonic Frontier's free DLC. You know, I'm almost feeling jealous of StarCraft fans. At least their game is a game bent over a barrel. There was one more thing. Oh yeah, $65 horse armor. Oh, but it's horse armor and money. Mm -hmm. Man, I just had the weirdest sense of, man, what's that thing called when you think you've done something, but you don't know if you did it? How the should I know? Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. It's almost impressive how they managed to top Diablo 4 and just how crappy this game is. It's got the whole buffet of fails. Developers overworked with crunch that's insane even by industry standards. Check. Higher ups trying to spin it as a labor of love. Check. Fewer features than the original game released in 2011. Check. Promised features not being there. Check. Features that were removed after launch. Check. Bugs and glitches up the wazoo, checkity, check, check, check. And the cherry on top? They apparently made a whole new launcher for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, which is, just look at this, it's so clunky. 
Oh, and yeah, Call of Duty was outsold by a random indie game. This actually puts a smile on my face. The Nick Merckx controversy. I ain't even, I ain't even going near that. BlizzCon $800 pass. I don't know if this one is malice or incompetence. Activision priced their special ticket for BlizzCon this year at $800. But when people who shelled out nearly a grand for this ticket showed up, they got the exact same treatment as people who bought the normal ticket. Regardless if this was intentional or stupidity, this fail in particular blows my mind. These people still have enough faith and goodwill in ActaBliz to shell out $800 for an upgraded ticket to BlizzCon, which doesn't even include travel fees or lodging, and ActaBliz just spat in their faces. And I've not yet heard anything about people getting refunds. Although that I'm not surprised about. ActaBliz seems to have a habit of doing that. The major deciding factor in giving ActaBliz number one again this year was that all of this was just a single company. Really going out with a bang before the whole micro Blizz movement. So as a way of saying so long and thanks for all the fish to Activision Blizzard, here's their swan song, a charcoal roasting. You guys suck and we won't miss you. I'm Josh Scorcher and now a moment of silence for the loss of E3. Well, that was fun. Happy New Year, folks. Who's for Chinese? Cop Hey everyone, this is Josh. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, and share the video around. Please check out my other social media like my Twitter, Twitch, and Tumblr. Check out my other channels such as Joshua Burner for reactions and other stuff, Dragon Fighter Gaming for tabletop, and Pop Equestria for cartoons. Consider checking below the video and donating to my Patreon, Streamlabs for my merchandise, or becoming a YouTube member. Thanks for watching. <laughs>